Hey everyone, Jason Shadrick here with Premier Guitar, and we are in studio here with Martin Sexton. And we're going to talk today, Martin, about the songs you play, a little bit about your guitar technique, and kind of all your, or lack of gear, secrets. Mm, cool, you know? man. So, so first, let's start out with uh, playing a song. So what do, you, what do you feel like playing for us first to kick things off? Uh, how about a tune called Digging You? Um, kind of try to play a little bass and the chords mm -hmm. and rhythm all at the same time goes like this. How's about a cup and coffee okay tea that's fine with me? Need it at 15. All right, 6.30 is fine, just be with me. Any time I day, any place you say, just look like you. It's my lucky day, I'm here to stay with you. Digging me, digging you, digging me, digging you. Digging me, digging you, dig. Later at the thrift store, shopping for a gift for you. I might ask you back, that big on the rack of shoes. What's it over there? That's us in the blue mirror. Oh, such a vintage view, posing it with you. Digging me, digging you. Digging me, digging you, dig. All of my life, I've been. Oh, don't, 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 All in this time span, praying to you on bended knees. All of my time, hoping and begging, please, for only you. Do, 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 do. Excellent. So talk to me a little bit about kind of what you were doing in that tune and how that kind of chord progression, that kind of feel came about. Were there guitar players you heard when you were growing up that you kind of that first style of walking bass and chords kind of caught your ear? Um, this song is a direct result of my love for old stuff. I was in an antique shop years ago and found this old student guitar and the strings were like an inch off the, the fretboard so it was like wrestling just playing it mm -hmm. and um but i could kind of ham out these these chords and um i started i, I i'm not a, I, I don't have any boogie woogie records mm -hmm. uh, um and so that 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 uh thing that two to five thing and one kind of just came out and um and then the sixth thing and, and i was like i was listening to a fellow named ted hawkins and he had a line in a song, it was, um, watching you, watching me, watching you, watching me, and, or something like that. And I thought, that's a cool idea, and digging you, digging me, digging you. And, and so uh, my daughter was a little girl at the time, and, and she used to say, hey, Daddy, play that Diggaby Diggaby song. And, um, and then that, and that so it you know, kind of hashed it out, and that's how that song was born. Mm -hmm. So growing up, you came from a big family. Uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I'm one of 12. I'm the 10th of 12. Uh, and um, did you have a hard time learning everybody's name? Still have a hard time, Still actually. Hard time. <laughs> so what kind of music was in your house with so many brothers and sisters, kind of probably with different interests and stuff? And... It's funny. Um, not a lot of music in my family. Um, some folks in my family can, can really 
sing, and other people couldn't carry a tune if they had a picnic basket. Um, so if, you, if you're at our house for someone's birthday and everyone happens to be in town, I have to bring a recording device because it's like half the people are singing in tune and the other half are in six other tunes at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like happy birthday to <laughs> Satan. You know what I mean? It sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, so to answer the question, um, not a lot of music in my family. Uh, there were some old Perry Como records growing up, some old Beatles records, which I just like grabbed a hold of. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter Frampton Comes Alive and Fleetwood Mac. That 70s stuff, my, my older brothers were into that. And I, I kind of just, it was like a sponge. It, and um, so that very little bit of music, I just, it just soaked it right up. Mm -hmm. And uh, But a lot of people think I come from a house where everybody sang and everybody listened to everything. And Syracuse, New York is, at, at least when I was growing up, was kind of devoid of anything besides classic hits. Mm -hmm. When it came to the, to the Beatles, he said, what hit you first, the lyrics or the music? Beatles, for me, was a, the, the, the vibe and the sound. The first thing I ever heard of the Beatles was... Uh, Side A Abbey Road. I used to go down to the basement. There's a box of LPs, and I would grab them and I would take them up to the athletic field and wing them into the, the wind just for fun. <laughs> and I found this one with a green apple on it. It said Beatles Abbey Road. And I always thought of Beatles as like, I want to hold your hand. So I put this on, and it was all scratched up. It was like, come together, and I want you, she's so heavy, and Maxwell Silver Hammer, and all these awesome tunes, and that whole B side. Uh, That's sweet. Uh, it's just. That's one of my favorite records of all time. So who are your, like, your big guitar? When you were growing up and you had the Beatles, who are your big guitar guys when you were growing up? Peter Frampton. Mm -hmm. He's still one of my favorites. Um, what was it about him that really kind of hit you? His melody and his sound and what he does, not only with the voice box, but just with a Leslie. And um, he just sings with his guitar. And uh, I was another dream come true. I got to play Do You Feel Like We Do with him at Madison Square Garden. Had to pinch myself. Yeah, right. And um, Jimmy Page, of course, mm -hmm. Hendrix, all the. All what the what was it about? Was it the, was it the riffs of, of Page that really kind of? Page for me. Or kind of the mysticism about. It's the mysticism yeah. and um, the sound. You know what he does, and uh, you know you read about how he got all those awesome sounds. You know, with mm -hmm. using with little tiny amps or. Um, whether it's a Leslie with the with the with the thing stopped, with the the, the spinning thing stopped, or um, just cool techniques, and of course his playing, and he could play anything, and yeah, I mean I love guitar, I always have. When when you with those influences, mind you, growing up, when you got to the point where you were able to kind of spend some time in a studio and, and kind of use. All the advantages that a studio gives you. Did any of that stuff kind of kind of creep? Oh back yeah, in your mind? I totally Are ripped just, off all the ideas from. Can you the give grades. us some examples of that. Um, well, anytime I make a mistake, you know, Jimmy Page says, "Do it twice, and it's not a mistake." Mm -hmm. So if I make a mistake, I do it twice, and I, every record of mine has mistakes all over it. Mm -hmm. A lot of records, I, I ran guitars through Leslie's and amps and a little pig nose mm -hmm. to have all different and direct into the board just to have all different options in the mix to have different sounds, even acoustics. Um, I'll run it through everything just so we have options. Mm -hmm. And um, also uh, I have a record called Wonder Bar where I do a total Jimmy Page-esque. I'm on a Les Paul and I turn, I'm on the rhythm pickup going through a fuzz box with all the treble turned off so you get that fat fuzz sound. Mm -hmm. Total uh, uh, Jimmy Page thing. Um, and uh, I don't know, man. I've pretty much done everything but play Stairway to Heaven on, on my records, you know what I mean? I love, yeah, I, and, and I believe it's not ripping off if you take ideas and make something your own. It's, it's mm -hmm. basically a tip of the hat. Mm -hmm. If I was ripping them off, I wouldn't be telling you right now. Yeah. <laughs> so normally in concert you play Godin guitars. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about kind of what the advantage of are with your, you know, touring and setting up and logistics of all that with having... Uh, not a traditional acoustic guitar like you have here. Yeah, the Godan A6, it all happened for me. I was in Reno, Nevada, and I had my old trusty Gibson J45, 1964, and I was a little bit more reckless in those days, and I would whack my guitar on the monitor cabinets and, and like, ride it up, then rah, 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 get feedback and all this stuff, and one night, for the third time, the head popped off, 
and I was on tour and I had, that was the only guitar I was carrying. And so I ran to a guitar store and they had these skinny like Telecaster looking guitars that kind of sounded acoustic. Mm -hmm. And I tried them and it was like, hey, I can get that big bass sound without it feeding back. Mm -hmm. And um, that became my guitar because I could crank it. And that's sort of the secret to my sound is just lots of volume. There's, there's been many times where I've seen you and heard John recordings where you always keep asking for more guitar in the monitor. Because I want it to feed back. Mm -hmm. Turn the freaking thing up. So is that, how did you kind of get to learn to control that beast? You know, let's watch an old footage of Jimi Hendrix and, you know, feedback is our friend, really. Mm -hmm. If you can, as long as you can control it a little bit. Um, I love letting it, hitting it. A and just and working as long as I can stop it when I need to, I'm happy with feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so I, and, and with that guitar, I can really, you know, it's got a few buttons on it. I can control, you know, the volume and like the mids and stuff. But and how do you typically set up that kind of EQ on your guitar? Pretty flat. Everything mm -hmm. is just pretty flat. Mm -hmm. Just turn it up, maybe boost the bass a bit because I don't. I'm not carrying a bass player, so. My thumb, this is my bass player right here, Bubba. Well, he's always on time. Yeah, he is on time. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to, you know, feed him or hotel him or he's never getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the, the tailor you have here, a little bit about it. This I call uh, my radio guitar because I play this when I'm on radio or interviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been on a few of my records too when I'm looking for that sort of bright uh, tailor sound. Um, I got it in 97. I had just gotten an advance from Atlantic Records and went out and bought some stuff. And uh, this was one of them up in Berlin, uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. I bought this in 97. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have, you know, to, <clears throat> I, play it, I play it in one song um, at my shows too. At the end, I do an old school thing with an old style mic and mm -hmm. do like a bluegrass type thing with it. All right, well, let's try, uh, let's try another song. What do you feel like uh, us playing? Um, how about the uh, Buffalo Springfield cover? It's a great idea. This is, uh, I, I put this on my record uh, called Fall Like Rain because I believe music is, is here not just for entertainment, but for, to, to, to move people. And it's a wonderful motivating force. And the times we're in now, I don't believe in left and right, black and white, gay and straight, old and young. I believe in as hippy dippy as it sounds, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And, um, because I feel like we're so divided. So music has that power. You know, at my shows, people are singing in harmony. And I don't have, like, a, an audience that's sort of one thing. Like, it's all 20-somethings, or it's all hippies, or it's all yuppies, or it's all, you know, rave freaks, or it's all this or that. It's like everything. Mm -hmm. So I'll have some conservative Republican, you know, lawyer over here singing side by side by some twirling hippie. Uh, singing side by side with some lesbian couple, singing side by side with some older guy and some 18-year-old college kid. It's, so it's this beautiful, black, white, it's this beautiful, like, church. Mm -hmm. And I think um, it's important for me to remember that I'm the messenger and the music is, 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 is the magic, is the motivating force that I'm here to help bring mm -hmm. the messenger. And so, I had to put the song on the record because it's all about taking a look at what's what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's time to start singing these songs again. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I dragged this one out of the closet. Something happening here, but it is staying exactly. What a 
field day for the heat a thousand people in the street Singing songs and carrying signs Mostly say hooray for our side It's time to stop seeing what's that sound Everybody look what's going down Field day for the heat, a thousand people in the street singing songs and carrying signs. Who must be safe? Who great for outside? Oh, it's time to stop. Say, what's the sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Thoughts when you're always afraid Step out of line, a man come and take you away It's time to stop, say what's the sound Everybody look what's going down Stop, say what's the sound Everybody look what's going down Stop, say what's that sound Everybody look what's going down ha So I want to talk to you a little bit about your right hand technique. It seems like you're, you you kind of have roots in the James Taylor esque finger style mm. singer songwriter thing, but it's a little more syncopated, a little more funkier. You Does know, he play do, with his hands too? He plays not, with, not a pick. No, yeah, he plays fingers. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about kind of how you feel like you developed. Did you kind of start with your right hand, like copping James Taylor stuff, or? No, no. I I actually didn't know James doesn't use a pick. I um, basically I started as a pick playing dude. Mm-hmm. And uh, and somewhere along the line, I, I I dropped it, literally, and didn't have another one in my pocket, and started playing with my hands, um, and uh, and then I was I was really studying, like, this fella, the late great Ted Hawkins, um, who's got a great story, um, and he I saw him in this little club in Boston and he played with his hand he didn't use a pick and I thought that's cool because he could do like do more than one thing he could mm-hmm. do like bass lines and that's cool man and then I started trying it and um, I, I really haven't gone back I, I never use a pick mm-hmm. um, I'd actually like to just for certain sounds maybe on records but so let's talk about some of the ultra tunings you use so one interesting one that I learned is what you use on the song Candy. Oh Why yeah. Tell us a little bit about that tune. That's where I take the B string, go down to an A, which actually isn't an A because I always play in a, at least a half step down. Mm-hmm. So my E is an E flat mm-hmm. or sometimes a D. Lately I've been a whole step down on this tour I'm on now. Um, so yeah, I just drop it down. I was playing one night in my kitchen and uh, I just, I don't know why I turned that one down. It might have been a mistake. And it just had this cool, like, Indian kind of drone to it. Oh, that's cool, man. Dig that. And Zeppelin did a lot of that stuff, too, all that Indian kind of cashmere stuff, you know. And I thought, this is cool, man. I just started making up chords. And I pressed, I had a little Panasonic dictaphone on my kitchen table, and I pressed record, and that, that song actually just whoosh, flowed right into the microphone, and that's how that song was written. That was like, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Muse, because damn it, I wish every song was that easy to write. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's hear it. Cool. Hey, little jail babe. Tell me a story Let me burn the smoke and we can share in a while I wanna see you talk straight So let me hear your story Before you get off and make a change yeah, hey, hey. You see lately I've found that there's hell going round and great chase to my strain Talking about a woman that hasn't felt a day in his life Talking about a woman who 
just can't say no She needs another love her life She needs another dose in her blood Talking about a woman whose name is Candy She's so fine She's waiting on a back street line Like a lost angel, not long for this world. I don't usually get emotional, don't usually show my vein, she says. Only when I sing and when I'm making tracks. Sweating's just my mean way, show me where I am. To tell me where I need to be And through those eyes If she wore her disguise I'd see through it and I'd say Come in Time to Talking about a woman she loved me like a dog Knows a bone Talking about a woman I just can't let go I need to lose my love, I like I need another wound in my head I'm talking about a woman I know can do Like a loose cannon ashamed to explode oh. Very nice. Thank you. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you is about also about a live setup. I've, I've seen some YouTubes, did not seen you live in concert, where you have two microphones mm. set up. And the first time I kind of heard a recording where using that setup, it almost sounded like like somebody was playing maybe like an e-bowed guitar it, over yeah, it. Yeah. You know? So tell us a little bit about where you kind of came up with that kind of setup and how exactly that works out. Well, being a... Um I, I, I kind of come from the school of street performance. I mean, before I, Boston, I was in Syracuse singing in like 80s bands, singing covers, and then and before that, classic rock band stuff. But I sort of found, discovered um, my solo singer-songwriter guy in the subways and streets of Boston. And being um, solo, I didn't want to just be kind of... Oh, la, 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 singing and strumming for like three hours because it gets boring after two minutes, to me anyway. So I wanted to have other ways of um, 
entertaining other people and myself. So I don't have a drummer, so. So the guitar is a drum, or I don't have a bass player. And um, so I wanted to just bring things into the show that would be different from just a guy a singing and a strumming, you know what I mean? So um, I thought, I like to sing, and I like to do things with my voice, you know, whether it's a scatting or whatever, or drums or beatboxes or whatever. So I thought, what if I electrified the voice, you know, like an electric guitar? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I just run the mic through a um, distortion box. What's your favorite distortion box to use on something? Oh, boy, it's like the cheapest one I could find. Mm -hmm. It was just like had, you know, it was like... 40 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. It just makes it sound really crappy. <laughs> and that's all I need, just a little crap. A little delay, too, helps. Mm -hmm. And um, so I could kind of do that, and I could play solos while I'm, you know, I don't have it here, but, you, you know, like, so that was kind of cool. That's, I thought this would be kind of neat to bring to the show. And this tour I'm on now, I'm not really doing the effect vocal thing, but it's nice to have. And I, I didn't want to, like, become known for gadgetry, you know, or mm -hmm. known as, oh, that guy who, you know, does that thing with his voice, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because to me, it's all about the songs or what, what are important in the message of the music. And, and if I can do some cool things along the way to sort of spice it up, that's cool. When you talk about, about the songs, one question I want to ask you is how you feel songs kind of develop over their life. And one example I wanted to bring up is Faith on the Table. The recorded version, you know, kind of starts out slow, kind of a gospel-y, medium tempo. But when I've seen you do it live, it's like, you know, real slow. Oh, you know, yeah, you know that's the I mean? Otis Redding version, I okay. call it. Okay, tell us a little bit about how kind of you, it was it an accident you kind of discovered that slow version? story. That uh, tune, I was at Woodstock in the Bearsville Barn recording that record with, like, dream players. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Tony Levin on bass, David Sanchez on drums, my old buddy Joe Bonnet, or, or David Sanchez on piano, my old buddy Joe Bonadio on drums. And I'm producing, so it's like, basically it was a dream of mine mm -hmm. that was be it was real. It was like, again, had to pinch myself. So we played that, we tracked that tune, and it just wasn't happening. I'm like, it's cool and all, but it, it just it, it went to this place and it just stayed there the whole track. So actually, I thought, you know what? David came in, David Sanchez, and he started playing this churchy B3, and he was, I had pressed the solo button on the board, and it was just like magic. And I'm like, whoa, what if I just sang over that? And we just, so we edited it. We edited out the band for the first verse. Mm -hmm. It was just, so it would just, all you hear is, my singing and David's churchy B3, so it's this nice, like we're going to church, and then by the time the chorus kicks in, it's the whole band, Faith on the Table. Mm -hmm. And it really was, I was lucky it worked out that way because we didn't have to retract the whole dang thing. Mm -hmm. Can you demonstrate a little a bit of both versions? Of that oh yeah, song? well, and then live, I was like, you know, this is kind of like a soul record, a soul, t on, on the record, it's like, I got a little faith on the table, I got a little hope on the job. There's gotta be sanity around there somewhere. And then I shake it up, shake it up. And then I thought, that's cool. Maybe tonight, that's the beauty of being solo, is I can just, hey, you know, I feel like Otis tonight. I'll be like, um, I got a little faith on the table. Hope out a job. There's gotta be sanity around there somewhere. And then I shake it up. So I kind of dig both ways. And that's another way I stay sane, too, is none, I don't usually play the same songs every night, and I don't play them the same way. So mm -hmm. I might be, do an, Ad, an Otis version of that and a, a James Taylor version of this. And a, mm -hmm. and, uh, but all, all the while trying just to be me mm -hmm. and not uh, anyone else. <clears throat> um, and you talk about playing solo, and you've also experimented with different size groups. And for a while, it was you and a drummer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how kind of that connection of, of the singer-songwriter with the drummer um, kind of came together. I remember in my early days, um, Ani DeFranco and I had the same agent, and I'm such an Ani fan to this day. And um, back when she was starting, 
I was at Newport, actually, Newport Folk Fest, and I was on right before her. And at the time, she was just her and a drummer, a guy named Andy Stachansky from Canada. And uh, so I just thought, that's cool, man. She's doing that with just her and a drummer, you know. And um, she also had other configurations too, but I thought, hey, I, maybe I'll try that. Mm -hmm. So I tried the, the me and a drummer thing, and uh, it just worked out great for, for a couple of years. That's how I toured with me and Joe Bonadio playing drums. And we, we managed to get a really big band sound, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I found that I could do all kinds of things with just a drummer. I didn't have to worry about, is the bass player gonna catch it when I go to this key change? Mm -hmm. Or is the keyboardist gonna know that I'm about to hit the bridge? Because I didn't do it that way last night. Mm -hmm. So with a drummer, it's like, <laughs> anything would go, you know, mm -hmm. so it was kind of cool. So you always talk about kind of this freedom, whether it's a solo or duo, you kind of have this freedom to go in different styles and completely different directions. For a recent album, you had a, f a full-on band and you toured with that band mm -hmm. for a while. What was kind of the impetus behind saying, okay, now's the time when I need a band, you know? Uh, that was a sugar coating tour. And um, I had made the record, and it was with a band. Um, and uh, the Ryan Mont Blue Band was going to come out and be my support act. And uh, I was I love those guys. They're out of Boston. Mm -hmm. Great songs, great, great vibe. And... Um, I was going to tour solo and be opened with a band, which I, I always love. I, some people think, oh, you're a solo guy. You don't want a band to open for you. But I, I actually love that because mm -hmm. it's so different. Um, but I thought, well, what if you guys just kept all your gear on stage and was well, you were my band? So you do your set. And so we all hopped on the bus and we toured like that and they learned the songs and it was great. We had a great time. We did Bonnaroo, we opened for Dave Matthews, we played all over North America. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically wanted to capture the essence of the sugar coating record. Um, and so a lot of that had other parts on it, you know, mm -hmm. bass, drums, you know, guitars, keys. And so we kind of, um, kind of play things like the record, but with some extra sauce on the side as well. Because I never like to sound like the record. I'm not one of those bands who, you know, sounds like the record every night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what kind of you have coming up now. We know you have your, your latest EP, Falls Like Rain, that's out. So tell us kind of what's on the agenda. Are you working on a new record? or? Right now I'm in the writing, pro the early stages of writing, which I find to be the hardest part of my job. Is that cyclical? Do you, do you say, okay, now's the time when I need to go do, write for a new record, or are you always kind of writing? I'm not, I wish I was always writing, mm -hmm. because then I'd have songs right now <laughs> for my new record, but it's funny, I, I'm like a school kid, you know? I was that kid who was, it's like 11 o'clock, Marty. Is your homework done? No. Or I got a big test tomorrow, I haven't studied. You know, it's like, I'm a kind of, I'm like that. I work best with a candle under my seat. Deadlines. So what I'll do is I'll set up a recording date for, you know, October 6th. Holy mm -hmm. shite, I better, like, get writing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's Is that what the date, October 6th? No, oh. I'm just, that's what I do. <laughs> and then I'll go up to my cabin in the Adirondacks, and, and uh, I can only write at night because it's too beautiful up there. You know, I'll be writing a line, and, oh, look, at the loon just flew by, you know. Or I, I'm too, like, ADD or mm -hmm. something. i got to have, like, a real rainy day or, or just darkness to write. And where can people go to find out all your forthcoming album news and, and tour dates and everything like all that? All the social media sites, you know, Facebook and all that. And my, my website, martinsaxon.com, has tour dates and mm -hmm. store and all that on it. And, you know, records are in the stores and, and on the website and on iTunes. And, um, yeah, yeah, really feel blessed with, with the, the fan base that I, that I have. And, and they just stay with me, which is a beautiful thing. They keep coming back. And, you know, I've been doing this almost 20 years, and I just feel blessed that uh, everything is, is as good or better than it was, you know, last mm -hmm. year. Right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to thank us today. Thank you, man. Why don't Peace. you uh, take us out with a song? that night 
like a jet plane in and out of sight. I'm a hauling ass at a billion miles an hour, wondering how hard I'd hit. When they came into the station, they said I was bad, beyond repair. But I got no qualms with my situation. Say I am so. Say Cherie, 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 won't you do? Send your number, please. Tie him up on his own fantasy. Put him in a big red bow and send him care of me. I'm taking my chance on the wind. I'm packing up a Packed it up and I went to the winds and I the dialed in my VW bus for a year or two. Ain't nothing but a pipe dream in my guitar. Living off of apple fields and an old cigar. Taking this microphone, checking it out every night all along. Oh, my car battery's dead again. So I got my head dead, set against it Singing, say, shoo-wee, shoo-wee, shoo-wee Won't you dare do Say, shoo-wee, shoo-wee, shoo-wee Won't you dare do Leave a message and your number, please Take the time, you won't be satisfied Take on his own fantasies and send him care of me. Say, hey, hey. I'm taking my chance. Um...